with a focus on aviation and the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority is this morning addressing the security concerns that have been raised over local airlines and specifically the safety of the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport after the stowaway incident. Let's listen in to what they have to say. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, on Silverstone, we made a press statement recently where we stated that uh, they had satisfied the uh, corrective action plan that we had given them concerning the Dash 8 aircraft. And we reported to the public that Silverstone uh, restriction on the Dash 8 has been lifted. Therefore, Silverstone can operate as per normal with all the aircraft types that they have in their licenses and operating certificates. The recent Wilson Airport meeting, I called a meeting of the operators of Wilson Airport, uh, and mainly the large aircraft operators. And we wanted to explain that we wanted to come up with a solution to two things at Wilson Airport. Number one, there's congestion. Wilson Airport has grown to over one million passengers a year that operate in and out of there. And it was designed for about half that amount. And one of the major problems in congestion is the large size of aircraft that operate there. You're talking about aircraft that are 30, 40, 50, 70 seats uh, that operate into and out of Wilson. And therefore, it has created congestion because one large aircraft can occupy the space of four small, small aircraft. So that's number one, congestion. Number two is the state of repair of the runways, pavements, taxiways, uh, aprons, which are the parking areas that are required to be done at Wilson Airport. So we were there in support of Wilson, uh, of uh, Kenya Airports Authority to inform the operators that KAA has a major plan to revamp, rehabilitate all of Wilson Airport's pavements, runways, taxiways, etc. So we wanted to come up with a solution of what is the best way of doing it. And so we felt that it would be good to decongest Wilson first, in order to be able to allow comprehensive repairs and rehabilitation to be done. So that is what we were briefing the airlines about. So we made a proposal that uh, perhaps these large aircrafts can move over to Jomo Kenyatta whilst the repairs and rehabilitations are being done. And that is simply what it was. I would like to correct a news item that said that KCA issued a no term. Uh, a no time is a notice to airmen, which is distributed worldwide, that gives an instruction for something to be done. We have not issued a no time concerning that. We just came up with a meeting to discuss that possibility, and I'm happy to report that the operators were quite willing to support it, because we all want that Wilson Airport to be rehabilitated so that it, it can begin to operate more efficiently. We're also looking at the long-term use of Wilson Airport. So together with our stakeholders, we will determine what is it that we want to see with Wilson Airport in the future. Now, uh, with regard to our surveillance programs, I've explained our routine surveillance audits are done annually because all operators have to renew their certificates on an annual basis. So before you renew an air operating certificate, you have to do a surveillance audit on the operator to ensure that they're complying with standards and recommended practices of ICAO. But we are empowered at any time to do an ad hoc surveillance. Ad hoc means without notice. So if we have reason to believe that we should go and inspect operator X, we will do so without informing them or anybody about it, because it's within our mandate to do so. So I would say that uh, our surveillance program is working well, but we want to improve it. 
So now that we'll be able to take on new inspectors, we shall now be able to have a greater reach to our over 70 operators that we oversight. Thank you. Yes, madam. Yeah. Okay, this uh, Brenda Kirubu KT News. This is in relation to the about 300 uh, new employees that you plan to bring on board. Would you specifically give us more details in relation to this? And like you said just before you spoke, uh, you said this is going to increase surveillance. How was it before? What were the challenges that you faced because of uh, staff shortages? Right. Um, we, we have a shortage of our technical staff, in particular the inspectors who go and inspect air operators in the area of flight operations uh, and airworthiness or maintenance and also personnel licensing, which is Annex uh, 1, 6, and 8 in the ICAO annexes and standard and recommended practices. There is no civil aviation authority globally that has enough inspectors to be able to effectively oversight all the aircraft and operators in their book. And KCA is the same. So we do have a shortage of inspectors, but it is not limiting the progress of what we can. So what we need is to add more inspectors to be able to do more effective surveillance programs. Because like I say, we've got over 70 operators. We've got over 10,000 uh, licensed personnel. We need to ensure that all these people are not violating the regulations. So it has been a challenge in that we've not been able to do surveillance as much as we would like to, but it does not mean that we've not been doing surveillance. We've been doing surveillance all the time, and it won't stop. Now, I mentioned that uh, we are reorganizing our structure. So we, we are looking at increasing the jobs available at KCA by around 300 personnel. We're in the process of seeking uh, approval, first from our board of directors, and then we'll go to the relevant arms of government to seek the authority for us to be able to upscale KCA and employ more uh, professional and technical staff in order to make our mandate more effective. And it is important because aviation is growing. I've mentioned the growth that we are, uh, that we are getting. In the years to come, it's more than 5% growth per year up to year 2030. That means we'll need more employees to be able to effectively uh, manage and our oversight role over the civil aviation system. So we believe the government will approve. Uh, yes, sir. Probably just as a follow up to Brenda's question, with regard to the number of inspectors, how many additional inspectors is KCA looking to employ? Number two, the issue of uh, regulation of drones. Um, I think you probably KCA needs to come out clear. Is it prohibited? Yes, okay. Thank you. Now, uh, on, in the immediate short term, we're looking at um, employing over 30 new inspectors. And then as we grow into our new structure, we're looking at over an additional 100 uh, plus inspectors to join KCAA. And, where, and when I say 300, it's in all directories of KCAA of which 100 plus will be under the safety and security or the regulator arm of KCAA. Now, drones, you will have noted a communication, a press statement that we made that drone operations are illegal in Kenya, and that is true. In March of this year, an announcement was made that to inform the public that drone operations in Kenya are illegal. And the reason for that is that we do not have regulations to be able to manage and oversight drone operations in the country. But the good news is, and it's very important for you to note, Kenya and KCAA fully supports drone operations in this country. All we need is that mechanism, that legislation, to be able to enforce that a drone operator will be able to operate within the rules and regulations that are created by ICAO. I'm happy to report that we are very, very close to having new drone regulations approved. 
In fact, uh, we've been through the final process. We've just sent the regulations to our cabinet secretary in the Ministry of Transport to promulgate the drone regulations. Soon you'll be seeing them on our website and, and a Kenya Gazette notice will come out. And within seven days of that date of publishing, we are going to go to parliament to the Committee on Delegated Legislation. That is the committee that annulled the drones in uh, June of 2018. And we're going back to them to ask them to please ratify and approve the drone regulations. So in the coming weeks or months, you will see drone regulations will be operational and drone operations will now become legal in Kenya. It is a process that we've had to go through. We know that drone enthusiasts are very disappointed by the announcement that we made. However, they will soon be smiling when we lift the ban on drones in the coming weeks or months. Thank you. Right, that's the Kenya Civil uh, Aviation Authority Director General there, Captain Gilbert Kibe, just giving a state on on a status update rather on the state of aviation in the country. Of course, this coming in light of recent air accidents that have uh, been witnessed in the country and mishaps at their airport, particularly Wilson Airport, which he has addressed the issue there at length, saying that there are uh, some renovations that are planned to take place at the place. Has spoke of issues regarding. Uh, congestion at the airport. The airport is supposed apparently to be handling one million passengers uh, in a year and has been handling, uh, rather has been handling one million and is built to handle half of that. So he's been giving an update on